Hi, it's Nell, and today I'm hanging out in my backyard, which you don't see too much, but I'm going to be talking about how to maintain a pencil cactus or milk tree. And this is not any pencil cactus. This is my pencil cactus. I'm going to tell you a quick story behind this. I used to uh, live in San Francisco, and we did the Macy's Flower Show, the big Macy's Spring Flower Show, and this was in it. Actually, this was a cutting taken off the plant and the plant was probably about three to four feet tall and I had never seen one before because this was years ago when euphorbias and succulents weren't in and so I bought it after the show and I put it in a really bright spot in my living room in San Francisco tall ceilings white white walls lots of light coming in it was doing great and then in between the time I was working for the company and I was starting my own business um, I went to Mexico for six weeks and somebody stayed in my apartment and they overwatered my pencil cactus and I noticed that the soil was really wet but the plant looked okay and then like two weeks later all of a sudden it mushed completely at the base it was a single trunk and it went from like here all the way up to here and almost all of it just rotted out and it rotted really fast but I was able to get a cutting probably about this size off of it and then I gave another one to my friend and I kept it alive in San Francisco it was going and then I moved down here and I planted it outdoors and I have it in this huge estate pot and it's been really happy it was just a single trunk and now it's one two three four have branched off of it and as you can see it's full and really gorgeous and that story brings me to the first point which is watering whether it's indoors or outdoors you don't want to over water it mine gets a lot of light here as you can see it's over, over overcast today actually we got 15 minutes of something falling out of the sky i think it's called rain <laughs> in a drought here in california so we don't see that much of it but um, it gets a lot of especially morning and early afternoon light and I water it about once every month or two in the summer that's it a really good good watering I put about three but three buckets into it because it's a big it's it's a big pot and then it's all set inside water it even less because it will mush out I think the woman who was taking care of mine was probably watering it every week which was a no-no so go really easy on the water. You want it to really dry out in between the waterings. It's just hard to say how often, about maybe once a month, or in the winter it may only need it once every two months. A lot depends on the soil it's in or the type of pot it is planted in. I touched briefly on what kind of light mine is in. It's that really nice, bright almost to sun up until like two or three. It gets a lot of light indoors you want as much light as you can give it this would be a high light plant indoors i was having great luck with mine indoors until it got watered and oftentimes you hear me say keep plants in bright light but not direct light this one you want in direct light you want to give it as much sun as you can give it indoor in terms of fertilizer it really doesn't need any you might want to give it a one dose of an organic house plant fertilizer in the spring that's about it um, I put worm castings in mine a mixture of worm castings and compost I top dress this pot every spring and that's all I do now in terms of soil a succulent and a uh, cactus mix it's the best it needs excellent drainage you can do it in potting soil inside too but that holds moisture more so water even less if it's in potting soil I, I, I I just like to use a succulent mix for all of my succulent planting needs and that gives it that drainage it uh, it desires it has to have excellent excellent I just uh, filmed a, a video on a word of warning about pruning euphorbia so I'll be sure to leave a link to that I, I don't know which one I'm gonna put up first but the only reason I prune it is to take out some of the dead or to thin it a bit um, there's a little dead here but this just comes out I should thin this out because it's getting really thick here. I am going to be moving in the not too distant future and I'm not going to be able to take this plant because the, the pot is just too big. So what I am going to do 
is I'm probably going to take this whole branch here. I'm just going to cut it down right here, all, almost at the base, and I will let it heal over, and then I'm going to plant it once I get to where I'm going. And that's a, a reason why, to also, to prune your euphorbia is to propagate it, to either thin it out or, or to propagate it. Just a word of warning, just don't prune too much from down below and leave it all at the top because these plants are very heavy. I mean, it's just insane because they store so much milk. That's why it's called milk, milk or sap, in, in, the, in the branches and the, um, and the uh, stems and, and the leaves. Well, these are the leaves here. There are a few leaves that uh, come out of it, but on the branches, and the stem so it gets very top heavy and on that note you also need a good sturdy base for it because you need something really substantial to hold this very heavy plant up as you can see i have a stake in here when i planted it in here it was really leaning so i put the stake in the stake is <laughs> been in there like three years now so it's not doing too much of anything now but the plant is standing up on its own just fine but it's it, it's a heavy baby and some of you always ask me about cold hardiness of plants this one is hardy to about 25 degrees below that no go and i don't know if you can see it but the, here are the, are the leaves and the leaves are very short-lived and the, and the leaves aren't on it all the time at all they're really tiny they're very insignificant as are the flowers this plant is grown for its unusual wacky shape which has a lot of character and speaking of character you can see that it does great in containers it's a great specimen plant it, it also grows in the ground here too and in its natural environment it gets to about 25 feet tall the tallest one I've seen um, is at a botanic garden down south here in California and it was probably about maybe 15 feet tall. Now I'm not gonna go into the sap and the dangers of the sap because I've got that in the pruning video, but I do wanna tell you that um, indoors, I've seen this get mealybug and it can also get um, scale too, I believe. So you just want to, um, you can uh, spray them off with a little bit of alcohol spray or you can take a Q-tip and I dab the insects off of there because they like to get into the nodes, but it's not really prone to it. If you've got a fleshier, juicier plant, it'll definitely be hanging out on that. And outdoors where mine is growing, obviously, I've never had a single pest on it. It is insect-free outdoors, for me anyway. This is one of my very favorite succulents, but of course you know I say that about probably all of my succulents, but I really love this one. And there's a beautiful orange, orange form of this. It doesn't get quite as tall, but it's called, it's Euphorbia tirocali sticks on fire. And I need to get one of those because you know how I love orange in the garden. So I hope you have found this video helpful about this oh so wacky yet very appealing succulent. And please subscribe because I have a lot more gardening videos coming your way. I thank you for subscribing, for your likes and your comments. It's always, always great to uh, see them all. And uh, speaking of gardening, let's get out in the garden and make a world more beautiful place. Our world a more beautiful place. I think that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> and be sure and check the post because I'll have more info in there for you. And I thank you so much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.